is equal to the number of heads when you flip three fair corners. And as we develop the formula today, we're going to change the three to different numbers, and we're going to change the fair to instead of 50, 50 heads and tails, we're going to change it to 40, 60, 30, 70, 91, 99, 1, etc. We're calling this, so instead of referring to the number of heads when you flip three coins, we can abbreviate that by using the random variable, which is literally a way of going from the, the set of outcomes expressed as a set, or in English, to the set of numbers. So we can actually try to fill out the following, what's called the probability distribution, distribution of random variable x, which consists of the range of the random variable, which in this case is 0, 1, 2, 3. And the probabilities, these two columns together represent the, and we said last time the chance is 1 out of 8, and 1 out of 8, and 3 out of 8. And I'd like to go back and explain where those numbers come from. And we did it four or five different ways. That was, I think, from an intellectual point of view, very interesting. We can solve the problem four or five different ways to come up with the same answer. The first way, let's focus on this particular probability. The first way is by recognizing that the sample space, by using the tree diagram, heads and tails, heads and tails, heads and tails, and heads and tails, and heads and tails. By breaking up this up into two times two times two, or two to the third power, or eight possibilities, which if you write them out in the sample space, which is a set of all the possible outcomes, is heads, 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 tails, Heads, tails, heads. Heads, tails, tails. Tails, heads, heads. Tails, heads, tails. Tails, tails, heads. And tails, tails, tails. And if I did this right, there should be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of them. And the question is, and we, we talked about that last time, that these are all equally probable. It's just as likely to get two heads followed by a head as two heads followed by a tail. It's just as likely to get Three heads, uh, three heads and three tails. Everything, each one of these eight things are equally likely. We have to sort of assume that or understand that. So the chance of getting exactly three heads, which is this one over here, is one out of eight by using the formula. The probability of an event is equal to, the probability of an event is equal to the number of ways you can get that event divided by the number of possibilities in general for the sample space. In this case, the answer is one out of eight. By the same formula, you calculate the chance of getting three tails. Again, one out of eight. What's the chance of getting two heads followed by a tail? Well, again, one, everything's one out of eight. But that's one way of getting the answer. The other way of getting the answer is to recognize the formula we learned at the end of chapter four called the multiplication principle, or um, that A and B are independent. If A and B are independent, meaning they have nothing to do with each other, which is the case for all these coins, independent, then A and B can be decomposed into P of A times P of B. How does that help us with coins? Well, what's the chance of getting, let's talk about the chance of getting two heads in a row. A refers to head on the first flip of the coin. B refers to getting a, a head on the second flip of the coin. What's the chance of getting a head on the first flip and a head on the second flip, which is heads, heads? Well, the answer is the chance of a head is a half. The chance of a, of a head on the second flip of the coin is also a half. And since they're independent, we're entitled to simply multiply them. And the answer came out to a half times a half, or a quarter. If you take that one step further, and I'm not proving this, but it's logical that it should be true, A and B and C is P of A times P of B times P of C, when A, B, and C are, are independent. We multiply it by another, another letter. In this case, it will be heads on the third flip of the coin, which is also a half. And now it comes out to one out of eight. So the chance of getting three heads in a row after all is said and done is simply one out of eight by multiplication. If we're confident that the A, the B, and the C are independent, and in the case of flipping three coins, of course they're independent because one coin doesn't talk to the other coin. They don't know about each other. So again, the answer is one out of eight. The third way of getting to solving this problem is by Monte Carlo simulation, the fancy name. Well, another way of saying it, just do it. And that's what you were supposed to do for homework for today. You were supposed to pick by the rand between 0 to 1, 
repeat this. You're supposed to do four coins, not, not three coins. You're supposed to repeat this four times, then come up in this column A of the Excel, Excel file, so column C, column D, and column E would be the sum. So for example, if the computer picked for you a zero, a zero, a one, and a zero, and then you sum it, it's gonna come out to, it's gonna come out to a one, which means essentially the computer told you, you just flip one head. By flipping four coins, you got one head. If you then the next computer might pick a, a one, a one, a zero, and a zero. This time it came out to two, the computer said, I just flipped for you four coins, head, head, tails, tails, so you just got two heads. Then it might do it a third time. One, 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 which comes out to four. So the computer just said, hey, we just put four more. Now, if you do this, repeat this 8,000 times, and you got yourself a list of 8,000 numbers that represent flipping four coins, counting up the number of heads, repeating it, repeating it 8,000, and then keeping track of how many zeros were there, how many ones were there, how many twos were there, how many threes were there, how many fours were there, so it's not exactly the same problem, how many fours were there, and from that you'll be able to figure out what's the probability, or how often, which is the same thing, do you get exactly four heads, or three heads, or two heads, or one head, or zero heads. So by actually doing it, you basically get the answer. Did anybody do that? Did anybody do the rand between I issued to do for today? No, okay. Next, what was the fourth method? The fourth method was by kind of a logic. The fourth method said, well, what's the chance of getting three heads? One out of eight. What's the chance of getting three tails? Should be the same thing, right? One out of eight. What's the chance of getting one head? Which is this thing. Well, these, all four of them, if it's a good, if it's a good probability distribution, the sum of the P of X's have to come out to 100%. So this has got to come out to eight out of eight. So what's missing? Six out of eight. And what's more likely, one head and two tails, or two heads and one tail? Again, they should be exactly the same. One head and two tails, or two heads and one tail, right? Same thing. So the only possible answer is three out of eight and three out of eight. So we could fill out these answers by kind of a common sense or logical, not using any of these other methods. But now we're going to come up with a fifth method. So we have the first method is uh, a very simple formula from the beginning of chapter four. The second method is the formula at the end of chapter four multiplying. The third method is by simulation. The fourth method is by logic. And the fifth method is by a formula, like everything always boils down to a formula. So in this case, this formula is called a binomial distribution. The binomial distribution formula is what we're going to be talking about, I guess, the rest of today. How many more minutes do we have? Uh, 22. Detail? 22. Okay, 22. okay. So I'm going to erase this because this is not necessary for our calculations right now. We will need this other stuff here about the three coins. We don't need this, and we don't need this anymore. Okay. So now let's try to figure out the answer to the question, not by subtracting it from 100% or by logic. Let's try to figure out P of x equals 1 by another method. Somebody give me the answer to the question. What's the chance of getting exactly one head? I worked it out by the sort of logical method, but I got to add up to 100%, etc. Can somebody give me another method? I'm not asking for a formula right now. This is very simple. Again, when you see the answers, you may say, well, we're talking about complicated stuff, so there's got to be a complicated answer. It's very, very simple. What's the chance of exactly x equals 1? Yes? 1, 8, 1, 8? No. Well, first of all, the answer is here. The chance of x equals 1 is 3 out of 8. Oh. No, 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 but I'm asking, how do you get that number? I showed you how to get that number by subtracting number, by six out of eight divided by two, etc. I'm asking you to get the, how do you get the answer by another method? Again, it's a very, very simple answer. That attempt. A very simple question. Yes. Say again. Like how many are there, like a tail, tail, heads, tail, heads, tails, or heads, tails, tails, or the three out of the... Well, I, I think you said, we already have all the possibilities. These are the eight possibilities. They're all equally likely. So which one corresponds to exactly one head? This one, this one, and this one. So what's the chance of getting, it's one out of eight. This is the chance, one out of eight. This is one out of eight. So what's the chance of getting one or the other? Remember the other formula we had in chapter four, P of A or B, is equal to P of A plus P of B minus the intersection of A and B. 
So what's the A in this case? Getting, getting.